All right, I want to welcome everybody to Operators Debrief. I'm uh, Eddie Chavez, and um, I would like to um, introduce a very special guest today, a very special guest to me, a brother, a legend in the SOCOM community, a legend in the 160th SOAR. Um, we've developed a, an amazing relationship post-war all the way through the war, and we maintain it today and continue to watch each other's backs. Mm -hmm. um, he's the guy that when we're on target and we take rounds and we want the momentum to fly into our favor, he's the guy we call the angel of death. He is an AH-6 Little Bird pilot, legendary. <laughs> to hear you have his book that he has, uh, Death Waits in the Dark, which I highly recommend. Um, and today we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, but I would like to introduce to you my guest, Greg Croker. Thanks, Eddie. It's an honor and pleasure, man. Nah, I Thanks appreciate you being me. Absolutely, yeah, brother. We're, I'm we're honored to be excited here. excited for you to be here. Yeah, I'm we'll, we'll talk here. about Yeah, we'll talk about several things today and and uh, see where it goes. Yeah. You know, there's no script, there's no yeah. just two bros. Yeah. Two old battle dogs. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to, you see, we're, we're dressed casual here because it's, I kind of want to give to you guys kind of how we are together when we're not, you know, under this platform of professionalism. It's just two brothers talking, two brothers ha hanging out, having a, having a couple of drinks together. Yeah. And this is what it's like when we're together. Um, there's a couple of things I would like to go through with you is there is a very special relationship when it comes to the Ranger Fire Support community and the 160th fire support community. Yes. Um, and I would like to say, like, man, before before the war started, mm -hmm. I mean, we our realism training was insane. Yeah, it was. That's what that's what allowed us to be successful on the battlefield in combat. Yeah. And simply due to the way we train and and how hard we train. We're always, always training. We live fire at every training event. And there's Humans running around all over the place, and we're live firing over their heads. Yep. And you're doing call for fire. So, yeah, it's it it started a long, long yep. time ago. Every, we'd we'd build we'd build the houses for for uh, mm -hmm. CQB, and outside those houses, we'd build tire stacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're calling in from house to house to house, and shoot from anywhere from 75 to 150 meters. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in. Uh, minis and 2.75 inch rockets yes yeah. and um and there's one thing that they like to do to us uh all the you all of us learned this the hard way but all the young the new fire yeah supporter. the new privates when we come in and we're calling in this little bird and it's like oh man here he comes and we can hear the Burr. you look up in the air and you forget that shelling falls out and sure enough all of one will hit you right in the eye yeah. give you a black eye one fall on your shirt you're trying to pull it out it was, kind of an, it was kind of yeah. It was kind of an initiation. <laughs> yeah, but uh, baptism by fire. Baptism by fire. <laughs> yeah, and but, we're always up there chuckling. Yeah, <laughs> but I tell you what, man, when we did it in real life, never, ever, was I worried that you guys were going to mess it up. No. And God love the uh, Apache pilots and stuff. They were yeah. great dudes. Yes. But I never worked with them like we worked with you, and there was always that pucker factor sure there is you know yeah. but when it came to you guys i mean you don't I have knew. that full faith and confidence in yeah. like you do us because yeah. of the years and years and years of training that we spent you know out at those different sites at campbell at benning at lewis you know all over the all over the world yeah. literally and uh yeah so there's that that bond that's built and that friendship because our lives depend on each other yeah and, you know, and I always told fellas, new fire supporters, new rangers or Delta guys or whoever, you know, it's, it's not about, it's not about your country, your mom, your flag. It's about the dudes on your left and the dudes on your right. Yeah. And that's it, man. That's it in combat. And I knew that you guys, you guys were, could run out of ammo. And if we still needed you, mm -hmm. you'd be shooting yeah, we you know, have our M4. Yeah, your M4 is dropping. We're dropping anchor. <laughs> I know you guys so. wouldn't leave us, and you knew no. if you got shot down, mm -hmm. I don't. We, we're coming. Yes, sir. We're yeah, coming. it happened one day. Yeah, I know. We'll get into that too. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. Both of those have actually happened. Yes, sir. And we'll get into. Um, but the one thing that I find special 
between us is whenever we're telling stories mm -hmm. and you're talking about whatever op you're on and you know a couple rangers went down and you were like no nah, fuck you know a couple my couple a couple of my rangers were hit yes. you're in 160th but yeah. they were your rangers yes sir because as a fire supporter yes, you feel like your job is to maintain that fire superiority mm -hmm. and that nobody's allowed to get hurt because no. that's what you're there for we're there to yeah. protect the ground force and that's exactly how i felt on target once yeah. that first round flew i wasn't worried about cover i wasn't worried about none of that i was trying to get to where i can see that enemy yeah. i was calling in based off of um uh what another team leader called, what he was seeing from his building or his position. And um, my job was to keep my brothers safe. Those were my Rangers. Yes, sir. You know, and yeah. like you said, those are yours. And the same thing with the aircraft. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that all those aircraft were safe yes. from whatever ADA there was yeah. or for accidentally putting them in a bad spot so they don't get hit. Yeah. You know, I don't have you flying in low while I got an AC-130 coming down, yeah. you know, raining, raining death as well. Yeah. Well, too, and... You know, in this, and we trained this and practiced it, but in the AHs, we, you know, we fly as a team of two, and our most vulnerable point or time is when that dash two breaks off target because lead's coming back around. He's trying to hustle to get back to that target, and you guys are covering our break. Yeah. So, and not one word has to be said on the radio. Nope. It's just, it just happens. They're like, okay. Dash two's in, he's breaking. All right, suppress it fires. So it keeps their heads down until we can. It only takes a few seconds and the little birds to yep. get back and get back yeah. on. And we work, I mean, we work so much. But if we, we have to, because we're usually killing yeah. first time. Yeah. Six guns don't miss. Six guns don't miss. <laughs> yeah. But I, mean, I also thought it was beautiful, man. It was like quarterback and wide receivers, you know what I mean? Mm. And sometimes everything's always audible. Everything's, there's always a change yeah. to something. Yes. And I know sometimes there's times where, it's just fat. It would just been faster to me, and I just would lasso yep. you, no comms. and go right to the freaking target. Yep. And you guys are not no question. You didn't even question me. No, you guys were coming in, and just it was a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, you'll see that sparkle, and then like, okay, we gotta start looking. Then boop, yeah. goes to the target. We, we man, we it's we fast. Used to, we used to rain some death, man. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, good times, you know, and and just to. You know, let people know what the one sixtieth. So we're a special operations aviation regiment. We're the only special operations unit in the world. Okay, we fight at night. We fight with the Rangers and Delta. When this country goes to war, when there's a hostage rescue, when there's a high value target, that's who is brought together. That's who is the task force to go do that work. Okay, so the one sixtieth, we provide air support for those ground forces, for the Rangers and Delta. Okay, we have Blackhawks, we have Chinooks, we have AH-6 Little Birds, we have MH-6 Little Birds. And we carry those operators, those Rangers, to the target. So they get on target, plus or minus 30 seconds. That's our standard. And everybody, you know, I tell people, I'm like, 30 seconds? I said, yes. People's lives depend on that clock. Absolutely. When we tell the ground force we'll be there at 0200 hours, they know at 0200 plus or minus 30 seconds, the AHs are shooting, the hawks and the hooks are landing, and the guys are getting off and attacking the target. It yeah. might be right on the roof of that target building. It might be on the, you know, the outer perimeter of that target. But you have to, have to maintain that standard. And at that time, the first few months in Iraq, um, it was map, compass, and clock. That's how we got to the targets. We had our GPS didn't work. None of our NAV systems worked. Something was jamming them. And we, we finally kind of got it figured out what was going on. But, but yeah, as an aviator in the 160th, you were held to that standard. And you navigate to the target with a map and a compass and a clock. Yeah. That's the standard. We use all this other gizmos and gee whiz stuff to back up our expert navigation. Yeah. Always have. So, so you know, with this book you got out here, mm -hmm. um, which I think's freaking amazing. And if anybody out there has a chance, um, right now I don't think the hardbacks out anymore. No, we're gonna we're gonna reprint the softbacks, hardbacks. They sold out very quickly. 
and it's available on Audible and Kindle right now. But probably this winter, I'm going to get some more of the softbacks printed. I've just, every week, somebody contacts me and they're like, hey, I'm, I want your book, you know. And I was like, yeah. well, I don't have any. And, and I, did, I did have some editing done on it. So I think it flows better. There's, there's a whole nother audience. I use too many acronyms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's hard for folks that you know, aren't law enforcement or military to follow the story and, to, and it kind of jumps around. But yeah, I, I was real proud of it. And yeah, I, I didn't want to be that guy to write the story. I just didn't. I mean, we're, we have mottos and I, I try to uphold them every day. One, the quiet professionals. Yeah. But to me, this is not being a quiet professional. But I was, I was told by others that, hey, you're the guy that was in all these places, right time, right place, wrong place, wrong time, however you want to look at it, that I was involved in. And the good Lord put me there. It wasn't by choice. And, and, and I felt it critical to, one, to tell these stories, to educate future warriors, okay? To educate moms, dads, wives, children. Uh, we've sold over 10,000 copies. And I, I was just blown away. I, I really was. And I donate 100% of the proceeds. And I just check, I check every now and then, but it's $60,000 is what we've donated to nonprofits that support vets and their families and wow. first responders. Yeah, I think it's important. Do you get, do you ever get any feedback from like, um, oh, from people's wives who are, they're no longer hundreds, with them? And hundreds. Really? Yeah, I, I just had a conversation with uh, Captain Ripto's sister last week. Yeah, she had reached out to me, saw a podcast I was on, and wanted to know more about her brother. And, you know, Captain, Captain Rip was killed there at Haditha Dam. And, uh, yeah, in, a, in a, a bombing, yeah, a lady got out of a car, wanted water, and, you know, Russ was, I mean, he was just one of the, you know, greatest dudes I'd ever known, fire support officer for 375, and they were asking for water. And of course- And wasn't know, she pretending to be pregnant Pregnant, or yeah, yeah, she looked pregnant. And he and his two rangers went up with water and then she detonated right when they got up there. And uh, yeah, I've had, I mean, from kids, from children. I mean, this is almost 20 years ago. And you know, some of these babies are now adults yeah. and want to know, about their dad or want to know about a certain operation or yeah and it's and you know again we're we're a very close-knit family i mean we laugh together we cry together we die, die together. together and yeah it's it's so i felt that important and my wife was sitting there one night i'd written some stories for george han he's a an incredible writer he was my partner on writing this, he says he's the ghost writer. I said, no, you're not the ghost writer. <laughs> but he was in the A squadron in Delta. And, uh, but I'd written some stories for him and they'd posted them on the internet. And these, these editors would contact me, email me, or even call me. And they're like, Greg, you gotta write a book. You gotta write a book. We've had, you know, a hundred thousand hits on this one story. Yeah. And, and it just went on and on. So I was like, okay. And Edie and I were sitting there in the den one evening, and she goes, hey, here's how I want you to think about this. And again, I did not want to write this. She goes, this is your legacy. And this goes out to all these guys, all you guys. It's, okay? it's all the legacies in there. It's every guy has a story. Every man has a story, especially from our community. But this is your legacy, okay? And... She looked at me and she goes, I want you to write this for your children yeah. and your grandchildren. Yeah, that's Boom. awesome. I could grasp that. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Now, I started a journal on 9-11 on that day. Really? And I wrote in that journal every day for eight years. Every wow. mission. It's in my gun safe. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I think, you know, a little, it, yeah. But anyway, so I had that journal to refer to because there is no way I could have recalled no. all this craziness in this bro world. like how many how many people don't understand um especially once we were in that the task force was built when mm -hmm. we were going out 
two times, sometimes three times a night. Oh, easy. Every day. Every night. Every day. Yeah. We hit five, six targets a night. Yeah. In the winter time, because we had longer period of darkness. Yeah. Whereas summertime, we had a shorter period of darkness. Yeah. And yeah, we might get two or three, but yeah, winter time. Oh goodness. I mean, I can recall hitting eight targets in one night, and mm -hmm. gunfights at every target. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every yeah, we for were, the first. Yeah, we were. We were we were Three years, yeah, man. bro. It was, Every target it was, was a gunfire. It was the wild west. If you didn't, if 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 a gunfire, if a round wasn't fired, it was weird. Yeah, it was. It was very very odd. Yeah. So I actually, you know, when Edie said that to me that night, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this night. I called Geo. I said, hey, dude, I'm writing a book. He's like, Roger that, Coke. <laughs> that's all he'll ever say. So I started the next day. That's all I did. Every day, a couple times. Edie would say, hey, you need to take a break. Yeah. Uh, and she was right. You know, I was getting, going to those dark places, I guess, with those dragons, you know, yeah. that, that come after us. And uh, so, yeah, I'd take a break. But I wrote the book. I finished the manuscript in 89 days. 89 that, that days. But been, I had that journal. That had been an emotional time, too. Oh, dude, it was, it was, but it was cathartic. Yeah. Okay, so... And I'd, you know, going back and reading what I'd written, of course, a lot of emotion in some of it. Uh, when we'd lose a guy, you know, it was, yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard when you lose a brother. Yeah. And we're all, again, we're all very, very close men. But, yeah. And we so, still went out the next day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we still we, went out the next we day. We laid you know, waste, bro. It, it was it was so, <laughs> yeah. You get with us, we yeah. lay waste, you know. But it was, it's, it was humbling, man, because... <laughs> These warriors, a lot of these dudes, I thought were way better than me. Oh, I, every and day. And then they're gone. Yeah. And it's like every day. And then you're just going on with like you don't forget them. No. We never forget them. No. That's why that's where our, our demons come in, and mm -hmm. and that's why we make a lot of money for alcohol sales. Yeah. But yeah. But it, yeah, we day, use that to suppress, and it's yeah, it's not good. It's not. It right. is not good. Mm -hmm. But things like this are good, and that's why I started this. Yeah. Was because I wanted to bring brothers. Um, and some of them, um, you know, they only did four years. Yeah. But I've yeah. seen some amazing stuff out of from some young rangers. Oh, dude. I did um, every day. So before we get into the book, I just wanted to ask, um, before you published it, did you have to go to Bud's? <laughs> I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I mean, did you have to get your seal tried in before you got your no. book deal? I mean, I don't know. No. I thought that's what it came with. Yeah. Well, you don't have to go to Bud's if you write a book. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you're you right, you're just auto. Here's your trident. Yeah, you're go an go operate. You're an honorary CEO. You're an cool. operator. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah, and it and it, and I think it's. I'll just say this right quick too for you and everybody and myself that it it's important. It's critical that we talk about this yes. stuff. We're just you know, for, for me you you know I'm just a dude, man. I'm just a man, and and I pinch myself every day. I'm like, why am I here? You know, it's. Because you hustle, 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 and it's easy to quit or it's easy to get fired if you mess up. You mess up in our arena, it's, yeah. it could be very bad. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so I, I think it's critical, you know, for our warrior ethos and our tribe, because so many of our bros have have taken their life, man, and yeah. and people don't know about it. I mean, my best friend, Master Sergeant Leon Hanson, B Squadron FSNCO. In two thousand June of two thousand fifteen, no, you know, I'd talk. He called me every year on my birthday. I called him every year on his birthday. He'd just been to the house a few months earlier, and uh, yeah, and his his, his son-in-law from two seven five called me on that Saturday and said, "Hey, Leon took his life last night." Dude, well, it just crushed me. Well, I remember I retired in two thousand thirteen, and I was a bodyguard there in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. and I was I thought like you know I'm. PT, what the fuck's PTSD? Yeah. You know, I'm a yeah. damn, I'm yeah. a ranger, man. Yeah. I've been, I've, I'm a killer. You know, I can't even count how many <laughs> operations I've been in. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, I started feeling this, all this craziness. This weight. And like, it was just weird. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I got PTSD. I'm weak. I got yeah. anxiety. I got all this, this, and that. And you're the one that, you know, yeah. talked with me. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, if you felt all that, yeah. then, and then you were telling me about your, your Delta buddies. And then the cool thing about it, it sucked because I had nobody. But the cool thing is, is I retired before a lot of my brothers. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether they were from Delta or retiring from Delta yeah. or, or, yeah. or Ranger Regiment, 
I gave him the heads up. I'm like, look, brother. Yeah. I know you think you're not, but I promise you, just please call me because you're going to find yes. out. Yeah. You're going to learn. And that's why I have a special coming out at some point with the wives. That's, special that's going to be huge, man. Because they... It needs to happen. Oh, man. It needs to happen. I feel I have a feeling like I'm going to get emotional with them. And they're gonna oh, yeah. Get emotional because that's okay. Those ladies saved our lives, man. They did. It, and let me, let me tell you something, bro. It's okay to cry. Yeah. It is. And right. yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, we push this stuff down. We push it, we push it, we push it. But every man has a breaking point. Yeah. Okay. I saw one in 2013, 2014 with Eddie Chavez. And, but that's, that's my mission now is to help, help brothers and help their families, you know, help their wives, help their kids, and, and to talk about this. I mean, go talk to your, pastor go talk to your buddies go talk to a therapist i mean i've been talking to a shrink for 15 years but it helps and i didn't do that for a long time yeah um well so what i would like to do is um i know you got a lot of awesome things you've done but one of the ones the most insane ones that i think <laughs> Because I feel like every time we went on Target, we kind of, kind of had the upper hand. We yeah. kind of snuck up on them like ninjas, yeah, even, even though it would get crazy, you know. We did. But the one when when the war first started, there, um, they had a hard time trying to decide what they were going to do with us. Yeah. Because when yeah. I first joined Ranger Regiment, we were expert infantrymen, mm -hmm. and it changed to now we we are, you we're know, assaulters. Yeah, we're assaulters. Direct and, action. Yeah. And, um, yeah, before then, airfield seizures, man. Yeah, that that yeah. was the Ranger Cup of Tea. Yeah, you know, we or, have to yeah. have that. We have to have that airfield to start bringing yeah. in other stuff. But boy, and did it change! Did it? Oh, did it change, oh, man. man? But um, yeah. so one of those missions that we ended up doing was the Hadith Dam, mm -hmm. and so we were told to take this dam and hold it mm -hmm. because we were worried Saddam was going to take it down. Mm -hmm. And Saddam told his soldiers mm -hmm. that we were going to blow it. Mm -hmm. So he brought some highly motivated soldiers <clears throat> yeah. with a whole bunch of stuff. Fedayeen, Republican yep. guards. Yep. And um, I, would, I would kind of like to, um, to get into that. Sure. I would like to get into what's in your book. Mm -hmm. um, I would like for you to take us through how uh, you got involved in the, the Haditha Dam mm -hmm. and what you experienced because I know there was a story put out by Rangers, but R Rangers, we do a shitty job. Oh, no, you don't. Man. Oh, we do a shitty job <laughs> at talking about ourselves. Yeah. We, I mean, we have no, we have nothing on the Marines. No. Those or the dudes, SEALs. Those, oh, yeah. I'm telling <laughs> you, the, dude, the Marines to this day still think they're the first to go everywhere because they put it out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to find where the first place they ever went before everybody else. Yeah. But, and God love them. I love my Marines. I, I There's too. some great Super Americans. Fi. But here's the other They're thing. They're picking up arms here's the other magazines. Thing, bro. If, when, when stories like this need to be told, because a lot of those guys who go to the core, who really, we want to be the first in, in the action. Sure. We want to sure. be the, we'll get those dudes coming to Ranger Regiment. Yeah. Because a lot of times we're getting dudes who don't know what Ranger Regiment is, mm -hmm. and we're taking an average dude and making him a warrior. Yeah. Imagine getting those straight Fired up. killers yeah. and then making them even yeah, better marines yeah. but yes sir so if you wouldn't mind if you could kind of get talk us into yeah man. it was man that was that it was a very chaotic time and of course we were i mean we had multiple multiple targets and our d-day started on 19 march 03. D we had four teams of ahs we had 275 was with us their rr and of course, emerging targets. We had pre-planned targets, <clears throat> and then you know we were gonna push north. And our mission for those first two nights before the force went there that D-Day was 21 March, 03. So we had early warning, um, you know, radar. We had just all kind of pre-planned targets that we went out to strike. So. You know those aircraft coming in and those troops that were gonna go forward so that you know that would be taken out and their 
we had to get their early warning and destroy it. So that was that was what we did. We had so there were eight AHs or four teams of two that went out. Plus we had an MH6 with us, and they had a flare ball, so they could we'd put them in, and it was kind of cool because it went back. You know, stuff always comes full circle. So in Vietnam, they used what was called pink teams. So it was two H1 Cobras and then a loach, a little bird, scout. So the scout would go out, draw, <laughs> draw fire, you know, yeah. then the Cobras would swoop in and shoot the bad guys. So that's kind of the concept. We went sort of like, well, hey, this, this worked pretty well, you know, so. And that MH provided security for us while we were working the target. And also if something happened to, a, to an AH, they could land, pick us up, yeah. you know, whatever the case. So it, it was, it was just, a, it was a very well thought out and, and a very good hunter killer team. A pink team is what they call it in Vietnam. So that went on for that first few days. And, and then the force, you know, Army, Marines, everybody went in the coalition force. And then we went to, again, hitting you know, targets of opportunity. Uh, we did a we did an airfield seizure with 175 and Mudasis early on. That was like D plus seven or eight, I think. That's where we got our. Uh, that's where we got a tank kill that night. Nice. With that T55. I was told that it's the only one in history, a Little Bird. But we yeah, were carrying. I, I didn't think a Little Bird would be able to take out. A tank. <laughs> well, we didn't either. But we <laughs> that night we carried so we can carry the Gal 19. Okay. So that's a three-barreled 50 cal Gatling mm -hmm. gun. Fires a thousand rounds a minute. And our armament guys would mix our ammo with it was slap and then Ralphus. So some pretty some pretty bad to the bone munitions on that 50 cal. And yeah, we came around we came around the taxiway and there was a doggone T fifty five tank rolling down the taxiway headed to the Rangers. And we had just, we got, they'd done a call for fire. We had shot the control tower. There were some vehicles there. We'd shot the tire, shot those vehicles, broke, came around. And I mean, just right there in front of us, man, it was a tank roll. It was like, yeah. So yeah, we just hung on the trigger and armed the gal and, and shot it from behind. So that's where the, at the six o'clock position, that's where the soft armor is. And the, the Ranger Battalion commander came over couple of days later and he was like coke you guys killed that tank man i was like really <laughs> he's like dude there was blood everywhere the tank <laughs> wouldn't run there was nice so that slap just just nice. ate right through it like swiss cheese so then we we were going out and you know and and, it, and again i do recall you know it was getting pretty chaotic and the big plan was for the whole special operations force to make a airborne assault onto Biop, Baghdad International Airport, yeah, Saddam Airport. That. And uh, I was not for that. Oh gosh, man. Because we're they were like... they were talking about <laughs> three three what three uh uh C one thirties or or um was it one forty ones was a considered an acceptable loss. Oh, I'm really? like that's a whole fucking battalion bro. Yeah bro. And I was yeah. and I was stuck in Afghanistan by this time. I was yeah. supposed to rotate out and you guys were, everybody was, but nobody was relieving us because you all went to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And I heard that and I was like, no, yeah, I do not was, want them jumping on that. It was like two two Ranger battalions were gonna jump. Uh, fifth group group was gonna jump. I think one or two battalions of, of SF. Uh, Delta, I think one of their squadrons was gonna jump. The other squadron was gonna butt hook around and attack and then all eight ahs were gonna and dude i mean looking at you know we had assets and photos but there was an anti-aircraft artillery piece about every 70 meters yeah around that airfield yeah. we're like oh dude we're screwed man we ain't gonna... they were prepping for us yes yes they were but thank god it didn't happen and we had done got some... for tankers yeah <clears throat> yes yes yeah, thank God for the Marines and Army armor. Yeah, um, yeah, they moved so fast. I mean, they just cut right through them. And uh, the you know the Marines were the first into Baghdad, and Army was just yeah they were everywhere. And 
so yeah, we got up, got up there and got, took, took biop. And then we started operations. Of course we had green, TF green. I still talk colors, man. It's hard for me to say Delta or Rangers or, you they, know, they, they change their name every 30 seconds anyway, so you're good. Pardon? They say they change their name every 30 seconds <laughs> anyway, yeah. so you're good. So, and we had the deck of cards. <clears throat> okay. So that was their, you know, their priority of course, Saddam and then all his henchmen and then the deck of cards. So we were hitting targets, gathering intel, you know, every night, all night. And then Jessica Lynch was captured there, you know, her unit was hit. And the, as far as the AHs go, we would, you know, we'd rotate missions, team one, team two, team three, team four. That was a 275 and, mission, right? Yes, originally that was a 275 mission. Second Ranger Battalion, and, no big deal. Yeah, we, we were really excited for those guys because they, bless their hearts, man, they, they, you know, the 375 jumped into Afghanistan and, you know, 375 was here, 175 was here. And I was like, it's all right, fellas, man, we're going we're gonna to get in a fight, man, don't worry. <laughs> you know, and they had been, but, but uh, so, yeah, we were pretty excited for them. I mean, this is a high-value target, a hostage U.S. soldier rescue and I mean, it was a classic Ranger mission, man. It, it really was. And then there was another unit that, you know, felt they should have done it. So they got the mission and Rangers supported it. But uh, that that was, you know, that mission was going on. And then we got my team, we were called Team Jackass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're like, hey, Team Jackass, you're going to go camp with 375 at some dam somewhere. And I was like, well, we had just finished planning the Jessica Lynch raid with yeah. 275 with her FSO and FSNCOs. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, man, this is going to be good. And then we got pulled and and they're like, yeah, you're going camping with 375. We're like, okay, whatever, dude. And we just did followed. You, did orders. you think it was kind of a boring, like it was going to be something boring or? Yeah, to going up to go camping with yeah, yeah. the Rangers. We're like, yeah, because it was, you know, Western Iraq and everybody had pretty much been neutralized up there and the rangers were only supposed to be there like a day right a day one day okay yeah so the op order was <clears throat> 375 conducts airfield seizure at h1 which is an old airfield about 17 18 miles west of haditha dam all right so this dam i'm thinking dam you know i'm like okay you know i've seen dams at the lake or this this is one of the largest structures in the world Really? It's almost five miles across the dam. Wow. And it's like, I think, just over 300 feet tall. Damn. So it, it was a very, very large structure. And, oh, by the way, it was hydroelectric. So it, it produced electricity. And there was a small town of Haditha just to the south of the dam, all the way to Baghdad along the Euphrates. So it provided electricity for all those people, to include Baghdad. So <clears throat> we're like, okay, you know, this ought to be, this ought to be good. So we'll go up there with the Rangers and camp out. And then we had a few, few Delta guys with us also, but their, so their mission was to take, hold the dam for 24 hours with a relief on station from an army armor unit. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So they were going to relieve a company right. with a fucking yes which are like a brigade right yes <laughs> very very large tank brigade yeah yeah they were coming you know chopping their way through the desert there and then they were going to come west to east and then come relieve us so and uh, to let me set the the environment it was very very bad weather man i mean low ceilings and you you as a fire supporter, you're you're very knowledgeable of weather because yeah. you work aircraft. Yeah. And you know, clouds, low ceilings, bad weather, we can't get fixed wing in. Yeah. But we can always get the AHs in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the AHs will be here. Hell yeah, we can. They'll, those guys, man, they're crazy. They'll come. We don't care. Damn the daps. So yeah, and the dappers, dap boys. So and they were busy too. I mean, they were we're the gunships are are fire support assets in the 160s. We were scattered all over the country because everybody wanted us, you know? Nobody yeah. wants us until there's a war. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah. oh, we better get the AHs in here. So, so we, so 375, they did an airfield seizure. They seized the, 
airfield, but very little or if any, I don't even recall uh, opposition, enemy force. And then we came in, they flew us in, two little birds on a C-17. I was like, well, that's a little bit of overkill here, boys, but whatever, we'll take a ride. <laughs> <clears throat> and we landed and then got off. And so the Ranger force had already over, over land and their gun trucks or Humvees, up armored Humvees, what little that we had at that time. And they started towards the dam. Well, we had pre-planned with them to put in a clandestine fart for us about okay. yeah. four clicks northwest of the dam out in the middle of the- Can you explain a FARP for those yeah, who don't understand? A FARP is a forward arming refueling point. So we train the Rangers because we couldn't take our personnel yep. up there with us, and leave them out in the middle of the desert with yep. no security, no protection. Because the Rangers, they, they needed every man at that dam because this structure was huge. It actually should have been about a two company <laughs> but, two, but we they didn't have them we didn't yeah, you know yeah. they were all tasked out so uh it was bco 375 right yeah bco, it was BCO yeah so <clears throat> so they loaded up our rockets ammo so 762 minigun and we also had a gal with us so there's 50 cal and fuel so we we put our fuel in these rubber bags they're called z bags and they hold 104 pounds of fuel, jet jet fuel. The thing just throw them out, and and we train rangers how to set up the FARP, okay, the Ford Arming Refueling Point. So two AHs can come in and land, and we can, you know, load rockets, and then they'll they'll put out an infrared chem light, so we can find the darn thing, yeah. you know, at, at night. But we, you know, they'll they'll get a lat long or a grid. And, they're like, hey, your farp's right here. Okay, roger that. <clears throat> so they set that in. That was four loads for each AH at that farp. Plus our guys, so our crew chiefs and our armament dogs is what we call them. So they're armament personnel. They came in with us and they set up a farp there at H1. So we had fuel, we had ammo, all that. Cause we were like, okay, there's, there's not, you know, in the, the intel was that, you know, there's just, there's a few enemy there. We don't think it's going to be that big a deal. Yeah. We're like, okay, whatever. And again, the weather was, it was terrible. I mean, ceilings were probably four to 500 feet. Wow. And uh, that's why we couldn't get any fixed wing in there. And they had, they had come in a couple of days prior and just hit some of the S60s. Those were anti-aircraft artillery. Uh, yeah, those things look like big giant basketballs coming at you when yeah. you're, you know, when you're flying. Uh, some ZPUs, some ZSUs, so bad, bad, bad stuff for helicopters. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, and we landed. We got an update from Colonel Bailey at the talk. He was commander at the time, and. So we get in the birds and crank, and, and I got the radios up because uh, Sergeant Morris, he was the FSNCO at the dam, and he was in the Western BP, so the blocking position that they had set up. I believe there were six six Rangers in that block of position. Then they had another one set up. Now, keep in mind, it's almost five miles across this thing, so time and space is critical. Five miles is a long way to go when there's a gunfight. This was one company. One company. Hundred, I think total, all of us, Delta, Rangers, and then the four AH guys, 138 of us total. Total. That's a lot of space. To cover. <laughs> That's a big space to cover with. Yeah. Yeah. With those fellows. So I wanted to make comms with Mo. So we take off, and I can hear him kind of garbled, you know, broken, um, talking. Of up on the fires net. And Mo was a ranger, Ford ranger, observer, yep. Ford observer yep. ranger fire supporter, fire supporter, fire support NCO. So he was the ranger sergeant in charge of fires on the dam. Okay. And so we're going, we're going. 
and then I hear I hear squelch break on the radio, and then I can hear gunfire. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And then I hear, and again, he's broken. So we'd come up, you know, an altitude. I mean, we're like 20 foot off the deck, you know, to keep us safe and to keep out of gunfire What because we didn't know what was in route. And, and there hadn't been any reports as they drove, you know, out there. So, you know, we always stay low and fast. And it's at night because we are night stalkers, not day stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then I'm get, I, I remember, man, and then I hear, so I tune up our one radio or satellite, SATCOM, and they just, they'd rescued Lynch. So they just called, you know, jackpot on that target. And we were like, yeah, man, we got her. And then I'm, you know, so now I'm, I'm focused back to Sergeant Morris and the Rangers at the dam. And then I start hearing a little bit clearer. And every time he keyed the mic, the gunfire got more intense and more intense. And now I'm hearing, you know, 240Gs. And now I'm hearing enemy gunfire coming in. And these guys are screaming on the radio to to talk over the gunfire. It's so yeah, loud, it's so, so intense. Hear them, yeah. they, they are being attacked by a, a very large force, about a company size element. And how far, how far was this OP? It was on the west side of the dam. It was, how many of them, there was like five of them? Yes, yes, I believe so. So five rangers on their own. Yeah, five rangers in each. There's one in the east and one in the west, fire supporters. And we figured, you know, that, that made the best sense. That way we could, you know, compress that target if we needed to. We could fall back to the center, what, whatever the case. It's just standard operating procedure and how we do business. So now I'm really getting, I'm getting antsy, and, and I'm calling Mo. I'm calling, I'm calling, I call on fires, I call on company, I call on FD, <laughs> I'm calling, calling, calling. And we're about, I don't know, probably about six, seven minutes out at this point. And now when he keys the mic, you can't hear anything but gunfire. That's it. And the hair stands up on the back of my neck. And I'm like, I was so angry. And I, I look at the guy I'm flying with and I go, dude, a man standing on the moon in 1968 can talk to Houston, Texas, and right. I can't talk to my guy, you know, eight yeah. miles away, and da 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 da. And you're 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 in one sixtieth. That's an Army Ranger. Yes. But he's an Army Ranger fire supporter. Yes, sir. There's a relationship absolutely between fire support or between our attack helos. Yes. In one sixtieth. Very close. And the Ranger Regiment that people do not understand. We mm -hmm. are basically we we could wear the same patch. Yes. Yeah, there, there, was, the there, was, there was a relationship that we yeah. had. Yeah. So I know your heart was probably had to been it, sinking, bro. Oh, dude, it, it was. I was in, I was in emergency mode at this point because I I'd known Mo for a long time. We'd worked together, and you know we all know each other. We're all yeah. pretty close of the fire supporter side and and the attack assets, so the AHs and the DAPs. So now and then I can hear. You know, you, and you can just hear the difference in a, in a man's voice, man. Yeah. You, it just, you know, it's sinking. It's so. Finally, I said, you know what? I'm going up on Sat because I couldn't get a hold of him. I needed to talk to him. I needed to get situation report. You know, what's going on? What's because that helps us as attack helicopter pilots. You know, what helps us prioritize and to get to that target. So was he? Was did did he already give you the fire mission, or you just no? You were just okay. we had no comms on okay. Okay. regular radios. So I go up on Satcom, and I say, "All stations, this net, clear to the net, clear to the net." I have an emergency. I called Mo, <laughs> and he answered. I was like, "Nice, praise the Lord, thank you, Lord." And he goes, and he I could hear him on the other nets. Where are the AHs? Where are the little birds? We need the AHs. We, you know, and I couldn't hear any response who he was talking to or whatever. It was just one of those crazy, you know, queertrons for radios and atmospheres. And, you know, some days you could talk 30 miles, man. And, you know, Claire's bell, but I, here I am five miles away and I couldn't talk to the poor guy. So I got him on SATCOM and he says, where are you guys? I said, dude, we're, we're four minutes out. He goes, this is... I think he said something like, this is going to be over in two minutes. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, I got that sinking feeling. 
So he was These like, he was brothers. like, we got. He's like, it's gonna be over in two minutes, but mm-hmm. can just continue on. Yeah. So there's a huge lake to the north, and our plans like we're gonna we're gonna come over that lake low and fast, and then we'll bump. The technique that we use in the little birds yeah. is that we bump yeah. about four to five hundred meters from the target. So that gives us altitude, you know, up to three or four hundred feet. So now we can see the battlefield. We can see what's going on. We can see the maneuver. And, you know, we have pre-planned targets or whatever the case, numbered targets, GRGs, but we didn't have that in this case. So we had fire supporter on the west, fire supporters on the east. And we do our standard call for fires. You know, hey, you, this is me from my position, 360 degrees. And so I'm like, hey, just hang on. We're going to be there in just a minute, man. We're going to be there. And, you know, we were talking internally. And we're like, dude, I mean, we were pulling the guts out of that little helicopter, man. I was praying for a tailwind or, you know, something, man. That just shaved those seconds off because it was down to seconds. And we hit the lake and we look out. And I and the best way I can explain this is, I guess, if you've ever been to like a big concert, you know, say like, it's a Rolling Stones concert in London, England. So there's thousands of people there. And when they come out on the stage, man, all these, you know, the flashes, there's thousands of flashes. Well, that's what it looked like over the dam. There were tracers, man. I mean, left to right, overhead, behind us, in front of us. And the guys look at that. that I was flying when we look at each other and we go, we're fucked, man. <laughs> and we're like, we're laughing about it. Yeah. I, we're like, whatever, dude. dude the, you know? I can't tell you how many times I laughed because I thought I knew we were dead. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. it's fucking weird, man. Yeah. But yeah. But you're dying with your brother, so fuck it. Yeah. You know? So, so we get, we bump. And I mean, I, we knew right where he was. So we lined up on, you know, his position on that west edge. And we, we were probably within 40, 50 meters of his physical location just from pre-planning, you know, knowing where the guys are on the battlefield. And we bump up and, oh, did I mention this was a hydroelectric dam? So yeah. what goes with a hydroelectric dam? Wires. Oh, shit, Dude, yeah. it looked like a spider web, man. There were wires everywhere. So those are, you know, we have to, we have to be aware of those. Yeah. And towers and poles and because all that electricity is being made and then pushed down. So we, I mean, it, there was no doubt in our minds. I mean, dude, it was an intense, intense gunfire, gunfight. And there was a, a company size element were maneuvering uphill to the ranger position, probably a hundred plus guys, enemy uh, soldiers. Against five. Yeah, against five rangers. And we pushed over and I you know, we put the pepper on them and we shot mini, mini gun only because they were, we shot 12 meters in front of friendlies. Wow. Was our first engagement, 12 wow. meters. And we just, we started mowing them down, you know. Dash two came in, brrr, came back around. We did another pass. What, what was your co-pilot doing as you were, as you were We're flying? shooting them fours, bro. Yeah. That's that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing that's funny. It's like I, I tell these people, man. I'm like, you don't yeah. understand the love these boys have for us. Yeah. You know, you got your 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 guy who's the guy whoever's on stick flying is mm-hmm. shooting. Yeah. And your co-pilot was out there with his fucking yeah. M4. Fucking whoever's not targets. on the controls, that's our SOP. Yeah. Whoever's not on the controls flying, well, your M4 is up yeah. to suppress or to engage point targets. Yeah. yeah. And we're pretty good at it. We practice it a lot. We train to. No standard. big deal. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> or, we'll, or we'll drop, or we'll drop a hand grenade on. We got our, our cockpit stuff with with frags, man. Well, we used it in Afghanistan. No one, it worked. So we're like, okay, well, we're gonna have lots of frags in the aircraft with us. And uh, so yeah, and so at that point in time, because you know we were expecting light, you know, as a light force, you know, not much yeah. activity, da da da, and we're like, holy crap. And it just, we shot the second turn and in the break, we we're coming back around. Well, I hear on fires or on FD or fire direction that. So, Marmot 4 1, Romeo 6 6 fire mission over. We're like, oh boy, here we go. And I knew he was by his call Five sign, I away. knew he was on the east side. Yeah. 
And I said, Roger that, we're in route. I said, hang on. And same thing, every time they keyed the mic, man, just intense gunfire. And there were, I think, four or five Rangers in that VP, in that blocking position. And I'm like, holy crap. And, and you know, under stress, under duress, a human reverts to our lowest level of training. It's scientifically proven. Yeah. But Rangers and Night Stalkers, you know, we train, train, train. So he did what he was trained to do. And we beat this stuff in these guys when they're young privates. Yeah. Hey, you, this is me from yes, my sir, position. Da, 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 yes, da. Sir, we do. And that's what started coming out of his mouth. And I, I, I just paused, you know. And a lot of times, and you've told me, and other fire supporters are like, dude, when we heard your calm, cool voice on that radio, yeah. we we're like, okay, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. The yeah, angel, yeah, we got the six angel, guns are yeah, here. We got the angel of death behind yeah. us. We're good. Yeah. We're fixing to rain some death, dude. Yeah. So I let him finish his call for fire. And guys, you know, five, we were kind of chuckling about it. We're like, man, this kid, poor, you know, bless his heart. And uh, so he finished. He's, getting, I, he's surrounded by 200 dudes. You're like, bless yeah. his heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, I have your position. Mark the target. That's all I had to say, man. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah roger yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we could see him. And, yeah. and they did, dude, like, lay, just lay, and I'm like, holy, there's another company size element coming up uphill, tacking uphill. Well, now, they were, the Iraqi army was extremely motivated because they were yes, from Hadith. Yes. And they thought that we were going to blow, blow it, it and it was going to take out their freaking... Yep, kill their families. So Saddam lied to them. Yes. So yes. they're fighting to the death yes. because they're trying to save their wives and kids. Mm -hmm. so you got to respect that. Their way of life. They were lied to. Yep. And, and they paid the price. Now, too, that, like you said, they they had his best forces there. So Fedayeen, they're, I guess, kind of like our SF or Rangers for the Iraqi army. So there's nobody like our Rangers. No. But you know, that's as close as I can compare it to. <laughs> but they were highly trained professional soldiers. Yeah. They're they're ninjas, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the Republican Guards were there. Yeah. They had a division yeah. of Republican Guards there, at least. Damn. At yeah, at the at that base. The base was right there in Haditha, the city. So yeah, so we started shooting those dudes and we we neutralized all of them. And then, it, and then, you know, flying down the dam, of course, you know, we're seeing all the Rangers up there. You know, the snipers are engaging. You know, the Rangers are engaging. I mean, it, it is just crazy. Who was it? Was, it? was it Sergeant Major Birch up there? Birch. Birch. Sergeant yeah. Major Birch was, I remember there was yes. so much shit going on. Yes. He was just going, he was just going from sniper to sniper. He'd be like, hey, man, let me take a couple shots. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and he'd just fucking smoke a couple dudes, go to another yeah. sniper, smoke a couple dudes. Yeah. I it's can, just funny the shit that goes on in our minds. It is, you know, and we're, is. and I guarantee you, the Burles brothers were just joke, you know, just joking, mm -hmm. and yeah, they were having the time of their lives. Yes, sir. Even though death was coming for them, yeah, well, in their mind, no, you're, no, you're not. It was wave after wave after wave. So we started to respond to calls for fire, you know, and Mo would, you know, we go check in on him in the west, and then we go check in on the east because they just they just kept coming. They just, but now we could cut them off. We'd go down, you know, we could fly down a mile or so and, you know, and catch them as they're trying to maneuver up or trying to flank or trying, because there's, you know, there's a river in the middle there, so they couldn't come up. But on both sides of the, on the banks were these giant, uh, they're like, I guess dunes is the best way I could explain it. But they were like little hills, you know, where okay. the river had yeah, washed the yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they 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 look like dunes. Well, now they start getting mortared, and we're like, oh crap, man! So we we shoot we shoot a bunch of personnel in the open, down from the dam a little bit, break, come back around, and I'm looking down right. I'm looking down the river, and I see this flash, you know, because you can see it really good. The the night vision goggles we wear really. Um, enhance you know any light that yeah, you see yeah and i'm like huh okay well <clears throat> they're mortar landing i said that's the tube i said dude come on let's let's go so we fly down river dude and sure enough man there was their mortar team set up got them did you guys take any rounds 
we didn't get hit, not not aircraft physically. How, how I I don't know. I mean, and, there had to uh, been thousands of rounds flying. The right? next day, uh, we took one through a main rotor. Okay. Yeah, but that's yeah, and that that's that was a funny story. But anyway, um, funny story. Now, the guy I was flying with, he swore, he swore. So we're in a hard right hard right break that a bullet passed right in front of it. He said, I heard it snap. <coughs> and I, you know, I was like, I believe you, bro. I said, it's crazy. So we, so now I'm, I'm thinking we have to manage our oh, ammo, God. dude. Because we have, you know, on average, we'll have 12 to 14 engagements. Yeah. As a gun, as a professional gun pilot, that's part of your job to manage your ammo. Yep. Because yep. we carry 14 rockets and then our minigun ammo. And our job is to know that. <clears throat> yes. And you help us manage yeah. that. So now I'm thinking, oh, man, we're going to run out of ammo in like the first 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm talking at the FARP, at the Forward Armory Refueling Point. Well, they had put the in for us. FARP. Yes. Run out. Damn. So we go Winchester. That means we're low on ammo. Yep. So we have to break. We run to our little FARP. Well, we do that four times. Okay, and probably the first hour, hour and a half, and load. We the pilots, we friction down the controls. The pilots jump out. We load the rockets, and then we load the guns. What do you think? What do you in your in your, you know, the, doing BDA the best you could? What do you think the BDA oh, at that God. point was for the enemy? Gosh, I in just like the first 15, 20 minutes, I'd say four or five hundred. Just for the AHs, I don't, you know, the Rangers had their own priorities and, you know, they were, yeah. And they would cover our break, yeah. you know, like I said earlier, because that's when we're most vulnerable. Yeah, and, and they know that. And they know that. So they're like, okay, dash two's off, you know, suppressive fires, you know, and they, boom, it's everything to protect us till lead can get around. And, and they're watching us with their, you know, you guys watch us with yeah. your night vision, yeah. keep track of us. So... So we run to the far, we, and it's just you know a couple minute flight. So we very fast turnaround. We dump fuel out of the Z bags, get back in, get back in the fight. So now we're on our last load out of that farp, and we're still in an intense gunfight everywhere. They they said there were I don't know in that first night probably around four thousand is what attacked total enemy troops and. Well, so it's four thousand, one hundred and <laughs> it was the Alamo, 120, dude. Twenty hundred thirty no, Rangers. I ain't, I ain't kidding. Yeah, that's not enough, brother. They need to send another four thousand. Yeah, yeah. And well, I say that I'm not. I'm not afraid to brag about my brothers, bro. No, I'm not either, man. Like, yeah, I was like, okay. Well, what's the old Texas Ranger saying? One right, one Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm on the radio because I'm like, we need ammo. We need ammo close because it's a 17 minute flight one way back to H1. Wow. So 17 and our, 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 our crew chiefs and army guys, dude, they're like a NASCAR pit crew, man. I, bet. I mean, we land, we got full gas, full ammo in two minutes. Nice. It's, it's incredible what these men do. Yeah. And it, it's an orchestrated the whole 160th, ballet, I guess. The whole 160th are professionals, man. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're the best. Man, I walked among giants every day. Every day. Bro, you know, you know, I respect you. I love you. And I know you yeah. feel the same. But I still feel like like we were nothing compared to the people around us. No, I wasn't. You know, we were nothing compared to the people mm -hmm. around us. Yeah. It's, and it, it, it's humbling. And I think that's kind of like, I don't know how you feel. But I feel like I still haven't done anything in my life. No, I was. Bro, I was in. I, I'm not going to get into my stuff now because I'm going to podcast on mine. Mm -hmm. But all the stuff you've done is like fucking phenomenal, man. <laughs> and, and it's like, and I, and I, and I guarantee, and you're still trying to do things to help. Yeah. Help, you know, especially Rangers. Yes. Rangers and Delta. I know those are your, 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 your yeah. biggest love, your biggest brothers. Yeah. But that's just because we work more together. Yes, we do. Um, but it, it's just. It's insane, man. And, mm. and what's crazy is I try to tell people is we go on these targets. You can go in there and you can slay. I'll, I'll over-exaggerate. I can go in there I can kill 48 people. Mm -hmm. And when we go to the AAR, 
all I'm going to hear about is the shit what I could have done. did wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. the shit oh, I fucked were, up on. They were terrible, man. Man, we like. And I'm they, like, hang your feelings out here, yeah, boys. Yeah. And then you go home. Ugly. You go home to wifey, and then she tell you, "Smith, you suck throwing out the trash." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, God damn, can I do anything Roger right? That. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll work harder. I'll work harder. So, yeah. So at this point, my concern is ammo and and the speed at which we could get it. So I got on Satcom again. <clears throat> which you you know at that early stages man that was command and control and mm-hmm. and the and the commanders getting information on you know the tempo of the battles and what and we'd only had three rangers wounded on the initial assault at the dam so no you know nothing serious i can't remember the fellow's name one guy had gotten shot in the foot i think and then the other twos were yeah they were wounded during the assault but no no one was i don't think anyone was critical no no nobody was critical yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'd have landed. We'd have picked them up and yeah. taken them back to H1 in a heartbeat, which I've done. So um, that's always another tool yeah, that we yeah, can use. And so I get on SAT, and I'm like, are there any assets available to bring us some bullets closer to the dam? No. No Black Hawk, no Chinook, no MHs, no. And we had the MH with us still. So he would watch our – he'd – he would fly over the lake and protect our six o'clock while we're in there working, while we're in the fur ball, you know. So it, their, it was with, just, their, with their crew chief fucking. No, it was just two MH pilots in a, in a little bird. So we were still in our pink okay. team configuration. Okay, okay. So the MH, the MH would lead us out and then we would pass him and then he would go behind us. Again, if something happened, they could land, pick us up, you know, take care of us, whatever we needed. But they just, you know, they just didn't have the capability to carry the kind of ammo and gas that we needed yeah. at the site. We needed a big bird yeah. to bring that stuff. So, and I mean, both of us were going Winchester with our M4s. Could have no, no AC-130 help. No, it's cloudy, That would have been dude. phenomenal. You can't see. AC-130 oh, would have helped, would have been yeah. fucking phenomenal. It would have changed the whole battle. Yeah, it would because they could have gone. But that's Murphy, brother. It is. That's Murphy, it and is. that's why we train. Yeah, the way we do, and we make st- we get mad because we're like, that makes no sense. That's not gonna happen. Oh yeah, it does. Oh yeah, it does. We make stupid scenarios, and it's like, yeah, we went from a light for... force to being attacked by four yeah. to five thousand troops. Man, it's like, what? Where did they miss this, man? Yeah. But so we they couldn't get us any assets. So I I I said okay. I called a flight. I says, we've got to go back to H1, get gas and, and bullets. And they're like, roger that. So, and, and there there would be lulls, so to speak. And I remember I, I called Mo and I said, Mo, we're Winchester at the at the clandestine FARP. we got to go back to H1, bro. We're Winchester. I said, we're down to M4s and grenades right now. He's like, roger that. He said, go. How so, far was H1? 17-minute flight one way that's a long time for a and, fight uh, like that and oh my god man the weather was just and the the weather can be as much of an enemy to an aviator as bullets can yeah absolutely i mean guys hit the ground all the time or hit wires or hit poles. and were the op still 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 up ahead yes yep they were uh, still in place and and you know we had onesies and twosies i call them that you know would try to kind of sneak in on those western or eastern flanks to the dam, and they would, you know, suppress and neutralize those targets. Onesies and twosies are trying to sneak Enemy up guys. on us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, hey, I wouldn't. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. <Hey, go. laughs> but. God love them. <laughs> yeah. And and what was crazy was, so they they were reporting some ZPU fire. So that's a twin barreled. Uh, 23 millimeter uh, in yep. the aircraft. Gun. Yep, ZPUs. So yep. we'd look and we'd look. I was like, man, I just I don't see this thing, you know. And and it was on our third turn. We were coming back from the farp, from our little farp there. And I just I happened to glance over. Well, I see this pickup truck, and it's, there's a tarp over it, and there's two barrels sticking out of this tarp. Uh, That's where they were. They jumped in are, that. Tar- tarps are a night vision nightmare. Oh yeah. They jump in that truck, run out, shoot it, you know, over the dam, shoot at the dam, throw the tarp back over it, pull that truck back over, and 
Yeah. And just hang out. Well, it didn't last. Any, it didn't last any longer. Yeah, we put a rocket in the back of that sucker and nice. blew it up. But yeah, so we we get back to H one and um, but that that was the rest of the night. It was, you know, we come back to the dam. We'd go Winchester um, back to the FARP at H one. You know, we did. We made. We shot eleven loads Damn. of ammo that night. Damn, eleven bro. loads. I've Winchester some AC 130s, but I've never went through 11 loads of a car. 11 loads. Two AHs shot 11 loads of ammunition. Jesus Christ, bro. Yeah. We did. I think I've. I can't. How many mags did did your co pilots go through with the fucking. Yeah, at least probably 20, 22 mags total. How many grenades? I lost count, bro. (laughs) I think we'd we'd go out with, I think, 10 or 12. (laughs) Yeah. So that's. 11 trips and oh my god and the god. chiefs they'd get all excited because when we land they'd always check the chin bubbles because in the and you know when we're shooting in the left seat i was in the left seat so when you shoot all the you know all the empties go right they go right eject into the chin bubble and they'd shine their little you know little chem light down and i'd be like yeah you guys are getting because it'd be full of five five six the chin bubble would be wow. grenade pins and nice. you know all kind of crazy stuff yeah, it was a hell of a night, and uh, we were there for seven days. <laughs> what, yeah, what, a, yeah. what a twenty-four hour mission yeah, it was! Yeah, yeah the fight. But those guys what, fought and that's, hard, and and you know, and you know, that's the way we had to be as Rangers. You do. We had to yeah, be prepared to worst case scenario. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I, I think it's funny. Um, I can't remember what General said this, but he said uh, when. Navy SEALs are in trouble. They call Army Rangers. Yeah. When when uh when Delta Force is in trouble, they call Army Rangers. Rangers. When Army Rangers are in trouble, they call more Army Rangers. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So um Yeah, that yeah, that went on. So we and we stayed we stayed on site just way. I mean, it, the sun was up. It was day, and Mo was just getting nervous, nervous, nervous. He's like, "You guys got to go home. You got to break station. You got to get out of here." Duh, duh. You know, we're like, "He was no, worried we're about not, you guys." We're not. <laughs> we're. I mean, there's still dudes attacking. You know, so we're still. Because we're still he's worried about. Because he's, he's he's worried about you Us guys. Us getting shot down. Yeah, or yeah. shot. He's got all these people, and he's worried about you. Yep. Yep. And uh, so finally, we we're like, okay. We gotta get the heck out of here, dude. It's it's really it's daylight. Yeah. It's here's these you know three little black helicopters. Tony Ely, former one seventy five Ranger, he was flying the MH with us, and you know he's like, dude, we gotta go. <laughs> we got well, they were dudes were trying to sneak up on boats and stuff. Yeah, to the dam, they were take their M fours, man, and engage them. So it, it was it's a good combat team, man. The Rangers, H's, Little Birds, and. Uh, so Mo said, "Okay, I'm not kidding. You guys got to go." <laughs> We're like, "Okay, Roger." But man, I, I can remember hearing the clack, clack, clack of those AKs. And I mean, we we operate down as low as we can go, and you know, back oh, back to the mortars. So we found five mortar teams down river because I'd see the flash, and I'd be like, Poof, "Right there, man. Let's go." We fly down there, and sure enough, man, a little mortar team. I'd shoot them with an M4. Or the other guy dropped hand grenades on them. And, you know, it's all about economy of ammunition at that yeah. point. We got to use what's efficient, efficiency. And uh, yeah, so we're just like, Roger that. You know, varmint breaking station. He's like, thanks for the help, fellas. Beers on us. <laughs> that was hey, the last thing you know he what? said to us you, you know what? that you, day. And you know why there's no movie about it? Man, it was because Rangers another. weren't killed. That's right, and that's yeah. the reason why there's a lot, of, a lot of yeah. That's everybody asks us like, how come they don't have movies on Rangers? It's because we don't, mm. we're not in scenarios to where we lose. It's hard to kill us. It is. It, it we are hard to kill. And you look and, back, Eddie, over the year, all the years, twenty years now, all the missions that we've done, and very, very little loss of life. Yeah. Very little. And that's because how we operate yeah. and how we train. And yeah, I and mean, Rangers, I know and Rangers are the only unit, well, 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 with you guys, but the only ground unit 
that has been there from the beginning of the war yes all the way to the still end still there probably. and we are the we are the um Rangers have killed and captured more tier one targets mm -hmm. than all other units combined. Combined, combined. yeah. But yeah, um, it, like, but still, losing one ranger is too much. No, that's too much, bro. It was too much, man. It's war, though. But I mean, yeah, we we know it'll happen. And if it's, you know, I always said to myself, "Hey, I know where I'm going. I'm good with it. I'm a yeah. Christian. Yeah. And uh, hey, if if he wants to take me, that's good. I'm good with that. Yeah. You know, I'll be with my bros. Yeah. I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. That's killing bad guys. Yeah. Flying my helicopter. You know, we used to say in B Company, there's three ways to kill a target. Minigun, rockets, or the AH. We'll fly that son of a bitch right into them if we have to. Yeah, that's just yeah. that's just how our mentality, our generation was. I don't know what's going on now, but that's yeah, that was that was the camaraderie and you know, between Rangers and between the AHs and the one sixtieth and and it was the same because we knew that about you guys and mm -hmm. and you I felt like when I was on target, um, and I was scared a lot, don't get me wrong. Oh, I was but most scared, of the time most bro. of the time most of the time I was, I was scared, scared was in training because I'm scared of heights, first of no, all. Oh no. I hate fast roping, I hate <laughs> jumping. Jumping out of jumping. I'd rather take an ass whooping than jump. Oh, but no. um or actually fast roping was even worse. But when I, I was like on targets <laughs> when I was on targets and bullets were flying, you couldn't tell me I was a, was, wasn't was the baddest motherfucker oh, on yeah. that battlefield. Absolutely. Because I knew I had you guys, yeah. and I was pretty goddamn good with my M4. Yes. So the dudes were sneaking up on me. They were going to get lit up. Yeah. But I also knew that my Rangers weren't going to get hurt. I yeah. I cannot tell you how many, how many missions do you think you got roughly? I don't know. Last time this one, our first sergeant was looking at it, I was at like 900 something. I was going to say over a thousand. Yeah. yeah and probably I, and check it out, brother. Five, six hundred gunfights. I, in my, in my, with the, when I was going in, I never had one casualty. There you go. The worst I ever got was a fucking breach, uh, a piece of um, wood hit a sniper. Oh, no. Who's, who's now ended up going Delta. But oh, no. because I'll tell you right now, it, it was, and we were fighting a different time. Mm -hmm. But a second someone fired around, I yeah. was like, nope, no. fire superiority. <laughs> yep. Hey, check it out, Crockery. <laughs> you need to bring your ass over here. Yeah. yeah. And we were taking over, and I was dropping AC 130. I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to make you regret yeah. for pulling that trigger. Those three and, words uh, that everybody knows. Yep. Fire mission over. Yep. And everybody's like, uh oh. Yep. <laughs> here it comes. Yep. Get him, Eddie.